Now, from wherever you're watching us around the world, this is Galaxy Television News broadcasting to viewers here in Nigeria and across the globe. We are indeed glad to have you join us at this time. Just as we begin, President Mohamed Buhari will address the nation via a live broadcast at 7 a.m. on Sunday. Minister of Information Lai Mohamed disclosed this during a Thursday morning briefing at a radio house in Abuja where he detailed activities to mark this year's celebration of Democracy Day on June 12. 2022. The minister had listed some of the activities lined up for the democracy celebration, including a public lecture at the National Mosque on Friday and Jumet prayers on the same date and venue. He said this will be followed by the president's address and a church service at the National Christian Center at 3 p.m. on Sunday. There will also be a democracy day parade at the Eagle Square in Abuja on Monday morning. The minister did not ever say if Monday will be declared as public holiday as this year's democracy day falls. On a Sunday, a river instead said only the Minister of Interior, Rauf Arabashala, could make such an announcement. He assured that all events will be held and there will be no security breach whatsoever. Nigerians have been urged to be security conscious at all times as the country continues to tackle issues of insecurity. The spokesperson, Pray Niger Movement, Apostle Abridge Agbe, gave the charge while speaking to journalists on the proposed prayer organized for June 12. Agbe, while condemned the attack that happened recently in a Catholic church in Awa, Undo State said the criminal activities of these terrorists in the nation is condemnable. While urging Nigerians to come together in June 12 and pray for the country, he advised the religious bodies to be more security conscious. He also said training of members in churches and security teams will help reduce the activities of criminals in Nigeria. How the citizens can be a part of the 2023 election? Number one, we'll tell you get your PVC if you don't have it. If you have it, keep it very well. Number two, make an informed decision for the person to, to vote, okay? Many people are campaigning right now. Look around, look well, pray. Which of them will be able to lead Nigeria to the destiny that God's talking about? Make that decision, vote. Number three, pray. Join the June 12th fast. Pray for Nigeria. Spokesperson of the group said people need to believe and restore, need to be believe and restore their confidence in the country by getting the PVC ready and vote for good leaders that will work for the common interests of everyone in the country. Train the, the members of the congregation to become more security conscious, okay? Because if we are all security conscious, you know, we have, we, you know, we know before now we just go to church and all that. But when people have, they have a security mindset, then they become sensitized. Before things go out of place, one or two persons would have seen, no, notice a movement. Because you know how criminal, criminal characters behave. It's a way they, they act in a sting way before they carry out the activity. So if we are more, you know, security conscious, we may help to curtail such events. And now we're pressing to security-related matters for a moment. As the federal government says, the recent heinous attack on St. Francis Catholic Church or in Ondo State, which left several worshippers dead and scores injured, might not be unconnected with terrorist activities of Islamic State of West African province, ISOP, fighters. After a four-hour National Security Council meeting on Thursday, Minister of Interior Rahouf Ayabashala alongside the Inspector General of Police Usman Baba sent the council reviewed the general security situations in the country with particular reference to the recent ugly incident in Ondo State and all traces of intelligence are pointing towards a possible ISOP attack. The council further condemned any insinuation of ethno-religious coloration being given to the Awa incident that could lead to reprisal attacks. This week's Sunday, and that imprint or imprimatur, full footprint of one of the uh, terrorist organizations are uh, detected as the perpetrator. Yeah, of course, the usual practice was for them to own up to it, but it was a cowardly act, they couldn't own up to it. And we are very close to getting them. That bit I didn't have. And I can't say more than that now. 
Yes, let us all, let us all mobilize Nigerians to know that there is no ethnic agenda here. There is no religious agenda here. Pure, cowardly criminals are involved in this. In preparation for the forthcoming governorship elections in Ekiti and Ashram states, the Nigeria Police IG said all is set for the deployment of over 17,000 officers with necessary security support from other agencies to ensure credible polls. You should be able to make effort to detect. So now that it has happened, we have gone to the second layer of taking into cognizance the issue of investigation. And the investigation is a process. It may not start today and end tomorrow. We are on the matter, and the matter will be looked into, both in terms of uh, looking at whatever angle that will bring fruitful results to it. It can be ISWAP, it can be any other thing. It is an act of terrorism that can be seen from all acts angle. Is, the foreign minister said ISWAP. ISWAP is just it's a suspicion. He said it is suspicion. There is a lot high suspicion that it is an act of ISWAP. While commending the efforts of security agencies towards mitigating the activities of Boko Haram insurgents in the northeast, an act of mandatory in northwest and central, Mr. President was quoted as expressing concerns over renewed spate of kidnapping and other violent crimes in some other parts of the country. The National Security Council meeting, which was presided over by President Mohamed Buhari, was attended by all service chiefs and heads of nation security architecture. Still on security-related matters, no fewer than 32 people have been reportedly killed by bandits in separate attacks on four communities within Kajuru local government area of Kaduna State. The affected communities are Ugwan Gamo, Dogon Noma, Ugwan Serke, and Meikori. The police are yet to confirm the incident, but the district head of Kufena, Titus Dawda, told newsmen that the attacks occurred on Sunday and 20, 32 people lost their lives while a church and several houses were destroyed in the process. He added that the bandits in their large numbers first attacked the Gunnoma in the early hours of Sunday morning and killed several people, mostly men, before proceeding to Ogwengam and Meikori villages where they also killed people and burnt down houses. The district had further disclosed that the victims have been laid to rest while the affected communities have been deserted by the residents due to fear of being attacked. A resident of one of the communities also claimed that a helicopter was seen shooting at the residents from the air while the remaining bandits were on the ground to attack any fleeing residents. However, a top security source countered the claim, saying the military engaged the bandits both by air and on ground, adding that this eventually forced the bandits to retreat. Nine suspects have been arrested by all operatives of the Benue State Police Command in connection with the murder of Mr. Terungwa Ikron Albert, who was declared missing on 13th of April 2022 by his father in Makurdi. The command public relations officer, SP Catherine Anene, who spoke to Galaxy TV News in Makurdi, said officers of Operation Zenda, led by the commander, CSP Justin Berengedia, arrested the suspects who confessed to be members of the same cult group and participated in the killing of a victim at the bank of River Benue. The police image maker said during an investigation, detectives from Operation Zenda Joint Task Force arrested one Victor Ohambe, Chichi Maxwell, Andrew Nechi Okoliko, Terido Tersu, and nine others in connection with the case. Meanwhile, the suspect Victor Ohambe, a 22 year old who confessed to have joined the killing of Mr. Terungwa after the leader named Doggy shot him and his head dismembered his body and threw it into River Benway, took the police to the scene of the crime. During investigation, one of them decided to confess that he and some other members were at a beer parlor in North Bank drinking when one of their leaders, a Capone, that's what they call him, by name Doggy, came in with the victim 
to the beer parlor, particularly at Keguma Street, and uh, bought drinks for him. After he drank with them, the Kapon directed that, that they should go to the river banks, and they went to the river bank. But to their surprise, when they got there, he brought out a gun and shot out, shot the victim in the head. One day we were sitting in on the on the 13th of April. Which year? April 2022. 13th of April 2022. Yes. Yeah. We were sitting in a mango tree in our area, so. Dog in our, you were you were sitting in a mango tree at Ajankawa where you reside. Yes. Okay, good. Go ahead. So Supreme Tepun, aka Doggy, came with a boy, and he, he now told us that we should sit and drink. So he now called us aside. He came with some other two boys that I don't I don't know them. So. He now called us that we should come outside that he wants to tell us something. So we now went, we now followed him. The command public relations officer who stated that investigation is ongoing to arrest suspects at large and other cult members, especially the acclaimed leader, Dougie, called on members of the public with information to contact the command for necessary action.